it's been my it's been my honor and privilege to speak with the people of God here at Silang Church of Christ, and we it is my my honor to once again be used by God to deliver His message to His people here at His uh, these congregations. And I'm so blessed uh, to the invitations from the leaders here, especially Brother Ernest, and uh, at the Putatan Church of Christ, we are at least uh, regularly uh, serving the Lord uh, Wednesday, Thursday. Wednesday, uh, Sunday, and uh, uh, Monday, we have, Monday to Friday, actually, we have devotional uh, every 7 p.m. Uh, to the following hours of, at 8 p.m. And that is our services there at Putatan Congregations. And uh, uh, to be to be here to, to deliver the message of our Lord this morning, I'm also with the congregations uh, at Putatan, and we would like to... Uh, they would like to share the privilege for us to be invited uh, here at your congregations. And today, to, uh, this morning, we would like to share to you the life of a Christian's message, which we become uh, the important factors of our uh, gathering here this morning. So, and uh, as we go to this uh, message, I would like for us to think about what is the changes, what is the you know, the, the progress of our Christian lives are after we have been baptized. I have I have heard uh, earlier that uh, our brother Christians and uh, sisters were baptized uh, in just a few months, two weeks, or uh, two weeks ago, and it is an on, uh, honor to meet them. You know, my brothers and sisters here, because it is an encouragement to us all, and that just the angels were rejoicing at in heaven, but of course. We as as a members of these congregations were blessed to witness them to this journey, Christian faith, and also to be edified by uh, by each and every one of us to to be more stronger in faith, because Christian life is not easy. My brothers and sisters, do not think about when you become a Christian, the life would be easy. No, it will be more harder, but a challenging one. But it worth it. It will be worth it. Why? No, brothers and sisters, Christ Himself, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, encourages us that we have to have uh, a courage because He have already been, uh, you know, uh, triumphant in this journey. So tonight or today, we would like to encourage each and every one of us to think about the progress of our Christian life before we become a Christians. What is what have been changed? In our in our daily living, because we are going to discuss about Christian lifestyle, and what is the common misconception? What is the common misconception uh, when one become a Christian? Many people who don't, don't don't want to become a Christian. Me per personally, I was baptized. I was converted way back two thousand and eight, and I and I was so. <laughs> I was so displeased to become a Christian because you know very very challenging. I was thinking about there had to be many changes in my Christian uh, in my in my life, you know, because of the uh, the 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 challenge of being a Christian. Uh, but there are there there is this misconception about Christian lifestyle, and I was I'm supposed that you also. Uh, before being become baptized, you had this thought in your mind: Would I would I be obedient? Would I be uh, would I obey the gospel? Would I obey the baptism or the teachings of Jesus? There there is this in our minds, mga kapatid, our brothers and sisters in Christ. And uh, tonight today we would like to dispel those misconceptions of being a Christian and let us see what the Bible says about Christian lifestyle. This morning, so that we could be encouraged, especially our brothers and sister, sisters who are already with us, uh, continuing their journey, their 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 race in this Christian lifestyle. So I want to give you a description of what the Christian lifestyle is like, and hopefully dispels some uh, false images of Christianity and. Maybe some of us we are still holding it, 
this kind of misconception. And I suppose that misconception or suppose that uh, the most popular misconception about Christianity is or Christian lifestyle are, number one, uh, you are not allowed to do anything that is fun. Uh, I, I was, you know, way back, two thousand before 2008, my, my life was, I was telling it to Brother Ernest Bilches, my, my journey in this life, or at least the half uh, of my life has been uh, in a wrong direction, you know, and I was, and I was uh, influenced by uh, bad influence, uh, my, my, I know, my, my surroundings, but and so it be it, it has become a very challenging for me to accept the the Christian journey, the Christian lifestyle, because one of my thinking is that you are not to to allowed to have fun <laughs> when you become a Christian. And I was so very uh, you know funny guy when when we when I am with my friends and they have influenced us, the world influenced us many happiness that we are you know uh, experiences. We're by the influence of this world. And sometimes it is hard for us to give up those kinds of happiness. And so for me, one of the misconceptions to be when why one don't want to become a Christian is that because they think that if you become a Christian, you are not allowed to do anything that is fun. Right? Uh, all you have to do is, you know. Uh, to sing, holy, holy, holy. Uh, that is a boring one. Sometimes people think about that. And of course, those are just, for me, a a kind of alibis, you know, justification for one not to be obedient to the Lord. Those are one of my, uh, as, as I was thinking about it, this uh, topic, uh, you are not allowed to do anything that is fun. In other words, when you become a Christian, you have to abandon most of the things that you enjoy uh, doing before become a, uh, became a Christian. And so the idea is that Christianity, uh, for us, sometimes people think that you have to, uh, to obey about all the strict rules uh, of the Bible. Uh, you are thinking we I, I am thinking that too. I, this Bible is so uh you makapal. <laughs> you have to study all of those scriptures. Oh no. <laughs> right? So you have you have to study. Uh sometimes we think that uh, those are the rules that you have to be uh, obedience when you become a Christian. You have to uh, to obey all the strict sets of rules becoming a Christian. And that is a misconception. Why? Because today, as we grow mature, the more we study the Bible, the, the more we endure, the more we endure, the more we love the scriptures. Because uh, the more we, we open it, brothers and sisters, the, the more we are being encouraged to, you know, to live a Christian life according to the will of the Lord rather than to live the influence of this world. And you have the difference, uh, the contrast of the difference of being a Christian uh, today, uh, way back before. Many people think that they still they are still living in a Christian lifestyle today. Uh, they think that they are Christians, but the Bible describes who is the real Christian. And that is today what we are going to talk about, the true lifestyle of a Christian. So, let us dispel those misconceptions that you are not allowed to do anything that is fun. You can do anything that is fun as a Christian. But of course, we have to recognize the will of the Lord when we do anything, uh, when we decide about things, right? But you are allowed to do anything that is fun. <laughs> because I was thinking about it when I was not uh, being a Christian before. So those are number one. And number two, all you do is, or all you do as a Christian is to go to church. Uh, so I was thinking it is a boring one because I like to be with my, my friends <laughs> who are doing a lot of fun, fun things under the sun, you know. So those are the things that sometimes people hold back, do not want to give up their life for the Lord. And that is the mis 
conception. Many people refuse to become a Christians because they are afraid that they will be obliged to attend the church all the time. Uh, no, my 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 uh, kind of dress, my kind of passion. Uh, before I was like this. Uh, We'll have I have a many more many bling blings in my <laughs> my hands before I had piercings any anywhere in my I uh, my ears you can see that previously so uh, but if I remove that I will be I will be out of my my uh, uh circle of friends you no know, who have influenced me to live that kind of living uh, you know brothers and sisters and if I have to remove that. You know, just for for this kind of attending church services every Sunday and uh, fellowship, uh, no, so uh, a very challenging one for me. Uh, as I've said, the story of my life, with Brother Ernest Belches, when the Lord uh, did His way uh, for me to recognize His glory to me, uh, for me to recognize His presence in our daily lives. Maybe we didn't we didn't uh, feel it yet, no. But the Lord is still uh, here with us. We just have to have a humble heart to recognize Him in His presence in our life, brothers and sisters. Whether you are not yet a Christian, hopefully you become one. Especially when you are now a Christian. We have to recognize that Jesus, the Lord God, our Savior, is in our midst, in our Christian living, brothers and sisters. So let us dispel those kind of uh, misconceptions so that we could have a journey that is joyful and uh, a lot of blessings of, of, of spirituality and hope of eternity as we go to this uh, journey. So the Paul's idea that Christianity is mostly about attending worship services once or twice or even thrice times per week. So these are the some of the uh, germ truth of these two ideas. But in the end, they are expressed in such a way that, that it distorts the true lifestyle experienced by one who becomes a Christian. So what is the true Christian lifestyle, my brothers and sisters? What is the true Christian lifestyle? I have said earlier that many in this world that we are living think that they are already Christians. And before I was become a Christian, before I was converted and baptized and obeyed the gospel, I was thinking that I am already a Christian. And many of this world today think that they are they are all already Christians. But what are the true Christian, especially their lifestyle. So this is the, the challenges that we are going to right now. How should we manifest the Christian living in our daily lives, my brothers and sisters? When someone becomes a Christian, they should expect change in their lifestyle. Uh, why? For several reasons, maybe. Uh, we should expect change in our Christian uh, in our life. Now, number one, uh, you will have to be or you have to become or to to have under a new circle of influence. You know, you have to really uh, give up those things that you know, sometimes influence you uh, to live the the model of their lifestyle. But a Christian uh, lifestyle, my brothers and sisters, you have to expect change. A new circle of influence that come in your midst. The Lord uh, Jesus, according to Apostle Paul in Colossians chapter 1, verse 13, it says, First uh, chapter of Colossae, uh, verse 13, uh, 13. <clears throat> and I read that. Uh, I'm sorry, my brothers and sisters, the Zoom was not was out. I don't know what happened. Uh, You're fine. Brother, it's working. You... Don't worry about it. Oh, okay. Thank you, Saint. Thank you, brother. I thought you I thought it was lagged out. Anyway, 
according to Colossae, uh, Apostle Paul uh, wrote this letter to the Colossians uh, brethren, chapter 1, verse 13, for he rescued us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son. And who is that beloved son? It is Jesus, our Lord and Savior. The Lord has transferred us into his kingdom. And that kingdom is his church. And that is you, my brothers and sisters. The Lord has transferred us out of darkness into his kingdom. This Paul uh, compares the idea or the philosophies and the motivations of the material world of the teachings, revelations, and leadership of Christ. One, he says, is darkness and the other is light. Since Christians now live by a different set of realities and values, there is bound to be a change in thinking, in behavior, course the ultimate idea is the lifestyle itself my brothers and sisters now the words of christ in the bible the encouragement of the church and the influence of the spirit are the primary that is the priority of our christian living so number one you have to expect change because you have now a new circle of friends a new circle we call this a family not just an ordinary family, but an uh, eternal one. It is our extended family physically because the body of the Lord is physically the members of the Lord is uh, man and woman of the church. So this is our extended family. But in a spiritual sense, it is the family of God that would be for eternity, set for eternity. And you are blessed. We are so blessed. Uh, to be in this family. Why? Because it will going to be for eternity. So brothers and sisters, remember that you were now in the new set of influence. And I hope and pray that each and every one of us exemplify the true Christian lifestyle. Remember that your life is an inspiration not just to this world, but to each and every one of those uh, with us today. Your life is an inspiration. Make that as a testament, as your journey in this Christian lifestyle, brothers and sisters, uh, to become a message of this world, just like Jesus, just our Lord and Savior. Your life is an inspiration. And make that a, a clear message to this world. Number two, Christians are motivated by the Holy Spirit of God, not self-motivated. What do we mean by that? Before we become Christians, most people are focused on self. Or what is important to oneself? What is important to us, for me? Or if you could uh, see or the, the, the influence of this world, the society that we are in, it is filled with all kinds of programs and books and experts who promise to help us find or improve ourselves. The governments, the movie stars, the scientists, the authors, and every kind of expert want to show us how to become more wealthy, how to become more healthy, how to become more beautiful, more secure financially, more successful personally, a better parent, an athlete, a better athlete, a better neighbors, and a better uh, person in the context of environment. Those are the influence of the world, my brothers and sisters. But those idea are the ones that said by the world is a self-motivated ideas. But Christians, brothers and sisters, were different. But before that, the focus is always on, the world is uh, focusing on, on how to maximize our lives here on earth. How, to, how do we make our 70 or to 90 years of our life with the Lord's will uh, to live our very best? 
Of course, the idea underlying all of this is self-motivated improvement. Is that uh, this life is all there is. So you should make the most of it, of your life. Just as I was in a teenager, uh, I had this idea, YOLO. YOLO, you know that uh, quotations, you know that term, uh, abbreviation. You, you only live once. So be happy. Do everything under the sun just for fun. The skies is the limit. It is a self-motivated uh, identity, personality, my brothers and sisters. Christians, however, are not motivated by self. Not a self-centered one, not focused on this world exclusively. exclusively. Jesus said in his word from the book of John chapter 15, verse 19. John chapter 15, verse 19, according to his apostle, That is why the world hates the Christians. They're, the world has, were very hostile to us because you are not of this world, although you are, we are in this world. According to John chapter 15, verse 19, if you were of the world, the world would love its own. But because you are not of the world, but I choose you out of the world, because of this, the world hates you. You see, brothers and sisters, that is why the world were very hostile to Christians because, you know, the influence that we have expose the things that are self-motivated kind of living. But Christians are not self-centered one. You know, Christian life in this material world are the subject to all the same challenges, opportunities, and experience. This is common to each and every one of us. Common to everyone. Except that Christians, we are motivated spiritually. Our goals are spiritually. Our spirituality. And our values are biblical. And our focus is life after this life. Not the things what is in this life. Our focus is on eternity, my brothers and sisters. So the, 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 the object of worship is not self. Why we live on this world? You know, uh, many think that they are not worshiping idols. Sometimes people don't talk, uh, think about that. But uh, as we go mature, we, 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 uh, we will see that I was worshiping myself before. <laughs> Why? Because I am... Uh, satisfying my pleasures and that is uh, what the Bible talks about uh, idolatry when you placed God lower than yours than, than uh, it should be in our hearts according to the Bible God first before everything else love your God with all your heart with all your soul with your mind with all your spirit and God uh, according to the scripture Love your neighbors as you love yourself. We have to be the least of the least, right? But the world think that me first before everything else. And that is idolatry. That is a self-motivated kind of life, my brothers and sisters. Now that we become a Christian, the object of our worship is not self, but God himself. And that is what the important thing in our Christian lifestyle. Jesus is the one that had to be set first in our life, in our hearts, and the one who offers us an eternal life. So these are the difference between uh, the, 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 the self-motivated idea of living of the world than uh, 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 Christ-centered uh, living uh, that we are now, my brothers and sisters. So that is what Christian makes a uh, unique lifestyle. It is a lifestyle not marked by the change of clothing. Although we have, you know, uh, we have this kind of idea that you have to improve. <laughs> I was I was uh, in the service uh, before uh, my first two three years of 
fellowshipping with the, with the congregations with the church at Mountain Lupa, I also have this. I have this blinding. I have piercing. You know, <laughs> uh, my 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 uh, dress code. Personally, my dress code where I'm just, you know, uh, I don't. I uh, the, it boils down. I I didn't give my best when I give to worship. But when I go to a party, when I go to my brothers, uh, you know, a celebrations and my friends. I just have to, you know, dress to kill what they have said. <laughs> I I haven't experienced having coat, uh, you know, dressed uh, with a coat before because you know it is so classy for me. Yeah, it's for it is for me. For me, it's very classy. But when I was this kind of living as we go mature i was i was uh, reading the bible the old testament times how they offer the lord uh, their services even the 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 high priest when they go to a when they go to a uh, what they call tabernacle the old testament one the high priest had to wear those kind of uh, meticulous dress uh, for him to uh, to go to a holy place that is the Old Testament times anyway. But I was thinking about it. How about me now being a Christian and the Lord who offers me eternal life and salvation? How do I dress in the eyes of God? Oh, There has to be a change, my brothers and sisters. We have to give our best, right? Even in just a, a small details of our Christian living, it has to be changed. There will be no... Uh, no, no uh major change in our lives if we don't uh if we don't uh our uh focus ourselves on changing everything for the glory of god it has to be a self uh christ centered motivation my brothers and sisters even our, in our dress code that is what i have experienced uh, before i don't wear this kind of ties I don't know how to I, I don't know how to Itali and by Itali. Tangle or Tama I sorry, Brother Ines. And to those who are watching with us <laughs> in the Facebook Live, anywhere in the world, you know, uh regardless of our languages, regarding regarding regardless of our dialects, uh, there is only one word that we are united. That is the word of God. So whatever it is, my brothers and sisters. Uh, it is all for the glory of God. Why I was thinking about mga kapatid or brothers and sisters, we are to live a Christ-centered, uh, motivated life, my brothers and sisters. That is what we have to think about. So, having said that, what is what a Christian uh, having put on after baptism, according to Galatians chapter three, verse twenty-six to twenty-seven? No. The dress that we have been talking about is not a physical dress here. Uh, Galatians chapter 3, verse 26 to 27. What a Christian puts on according to Apostle Paul. Galatians chapter 3, 26 uh, through uh, verse 27. And it reads, For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed on Christ. We have put on Christ in our Christian living. So Apostle Paul, we're not talking about we're, we're not talking about physical dress, but a spiritual one. The idea is that the Christian lifestyle lifestyle is the character of Christ being developed and perfected in the character of a Christian on a daily basis. So there is this idea that uh, daily change. Uh, the Lord is always in His work for us to be uh, uh, overhauled. You know, uh, changings of our of our thought, of our uh, conduct, even our dress. You know, uh, the Lord requires for us to be. Uh, in the progress of change in our Christian lifestyle, my brothers and sisters. As I said, Christians are subject to all the same experience 
as non-Christians, but the difference is that Christians' view and reactions uh, to this as Christ would, not simply as human being would. For these reasons, all the elements of the life that we have are seen through the visions of Christ, not man, my brothers and sisters. The idea is that everything that we do in this world is, uh, we are always thinking about what would Jesus do? You know, www. You know that a bracelet? Uh, who, exper who experienced or wear those bracelets? Sister, you have experienced that? www.jd. It was, um, I was not yet member of the, the, the body of the Lord, the church uh, before. I've, I've seen those things uh, in, in young people. www.jd. Uh, www uh, it means, Lately, I was I figured out what would Jesus do. Now, many people wear those things when in 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 nineties or two thousand years ago or two thousand years, uh, year two thousand. Uh, they think that when you wear those things, you are already Christians. <laughs> yeah. But the meaning of that bracelet is very important. What would Jesus do? You, you as a Christians, we as a Christians, before we think, we act, you know, and uh, decide things, we always think about what would Jesus do in this kind of situations. So we always consider Christ in our decisions when we decide on things that we would like to decide. And choosing our, of our, our partners in life, so, you know, uh, legal, legal, ano bang tawag ng legal, legal, hindi ko alam yung English. The courtship, yeah. When we want to court, courtship someone, uh, Brother Calix, you, you are going to uh, have this idea. <laughs> what would Jesus do? What would Jesus decide? Should I, should I uh, choose which one? The, the woman of the world or just the woman, of, the woman of God? Right? Thinking those things, it is a change of our actions, it is a change of our lifestyle on how we decide because what we uh, would like to exemplify is that our life is a Christ-centered life. My brothers and sisters. So, uh, we will discover this as, as we go along in our Christian living. But the Christian lifestyle we are talking about, third, is that we have a new direction. We have talked about uh, number one, as a Christian, when we become a Christian, one, become a Christian, you have a new circle of influence. And two, we have a new uh, different motivations. And lastly, thirdly, third point, the Christians lives or Christian lives have a new direction, a new motivation as well. So the main activity of the most people in the world without Christ is to consume. Consume food, entertainment, money, power, information, and the desire to satisfy the desires of the flesh and to be praised. And, you know, we desire to praise, to be praised. You know, when in the social media today, uh, we're very active having dislikes and, you know, uh, comments for their posts in Instagram and in every so social media platform, you know, my brothers and sisters. But Christians were now in the process of, in the progress of, of maturity. My brothers and sisters, you have now a lives that have been motivated by a new direction that is going for, for us to be an eternal purpose in this life. Although we have uh temporary goals in this life you no know, to live in this world but it, uh, ultimately we have an eternal goal and that is our focus uh why we are in this world paul explains this in the, according to the book of romans chapter 12 verse 1 and 2 we have a new directions we have the new uh, motivations on how to live and how we would uh, uh participate in our christian living and how to exemplify the christian living in this world 
Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, Apostle Paul explains this, uh, Christians who have a new directions. And it says, Therefore, I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living and holy sacrifice, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. And do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may know, that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. Jesus says in his, in his uh, word, in Luke chapter 9, verse 23, he said, If any man who desires to follow me must deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. That is the word of Christ himself. As Christ was in, in our service, in our thoughts, in our service, we have to always give, give all the, the glory and credits in our Christian lifestyle through by the renewing of our minds and knowing what the Lord God wants in our Christian lifestyle so that we could know what is good and acceptable and perfect in the eyes of God. So that is our new directions, my brothers and sisters. We have to be transformed by the renewing of our minds, not to be conformed to the pattern of this world. Yeah, we have to be uh, self-motivated spiritually and a Christ-centered Christ lifestyle should be and have to be motivated by the renewing of our minds. So the main idea of being a Christian is that we have to be in progress of change day by day. So these two ideas are clarified here. What you have said earlier that I have shared with you previously that you have to, when, why one don't want, don't want to become a Christian is that because we are the, I am thinking that you are not allowed to do anything that is fun. That is not true. But you can do anything that is fun. But as long as it is the will of God, you have to recognize the will of the Lord in our Christian lives. You are allowed to do anything that is fun. Just for us to understand, we have to remove those uh, filthiness of this world that we are in before because we have a new circle of influence, a new direction, and a new motivation knowing what the will of the lord according to apostle paul and what is that is what is good and pleasing and perfect for us in the eyes of god no we are not copying the 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 lifestyle of the world and we have to be the salt and, and the light of this world as the salt were being preservative preserving the righteous family of God, the righteous people of the Lord, and the light that has been set for us so that we could dispel all those uh, uh, life, uh, Christian living that is you know, negatively we are thinking about uh, previously. So our lifestyle, my brothers and sisters, is uh, Christianity is about following Jesus Christ every day. This exercise is the source of our strength and all the rewards of joy and peace and eternal life. If any one of us here, my brothers and sisters, are not yet experiencing the maturity of our Christian lifestyle, you have to practice what the fundamentals of being a Christian Think that you have now a new set of influence by your brothers and your sisters and you are the example to each and every one of us as we are imitating Christ in our Christian living because our lifestyle today, now that we are now in, is a Christ-centered life. And the character that we have to live is according to the will of our Lord and Savior Himself. The goal of our life is to glorify the Lord as long as we are alive and well. And even in our sickness, in our trials and problems of life, 
we have to continue to follow His will regardless of our circumstances. But because that is what Christian must be. Remember the Lord and Savior Christ Jesus suffered for each and every one on the cross. For the sake of us who were sinners. He died because of you. Because of me. Because of each and every one of us. Or not even worthy to call his glory. There has to be a change. I was thinking of it. When I was 20 years old. There has to be a change. In my lifestyle. My brother died. I asked God. Why is this happening? What is life is all about? Why are, you, why are you just like that God? Why not my why not me? But why my brother? I'm asking and questioning the Lord. And I was in awe when I realized and recognized that me too are going to suffer death for eternity if I'm not going to obey the Lord. And thank be to God, because of my brother who passed away, I surrender my life. To Jesus. It cost me one life to recognize a change in my lifestyle and to become a Christian. And I would not want anyone to experience those kinds of things. If you need change, brothers and sisters, change today. If we are not yet Christians and not being not yet obeyed the Lord. And his gospel through baptisms for the remissions of your sins. Decide today. Do not wait for the moment that you will be regretful someday. But to God be all the glory. He uses the life of my brother for me to see what the Lord uh, uh, prepared for us as we continue our lives here with a more better purpose. We have more better challenges, but the Lord has said it is well all worth it if we continue to obey His will. My brothers and sisters, I hope that this message encourages us and gives us a reminder. Do not wait for the time for us to decide when someone has to die before we recognize change in our daily living. There has to be a change. Now that you are in a Christian life, if Anything that you need for a prayer, ask your brothers and sisters because you no, know, they could help us to be to be uh, uh, edified and uh, for us to be more stronger in faith if we are struggling in our Christian living. But it will be all worth it. Just always remember that the Lord has promised us eternal life. That is the message and I hope that we are all encouraged and uh, reminded by the Lord's word today. God bless you and uh, we will see you again, Lord willing.